Hello, I'm Steve Spengler, President and Chief Commercial Officer at Intelsat. Our strategic engagement with our customers has certainly evolved over time. It's changed from a conversation about what's happening next year in their business to what's happening in the next 10 to 15 years. Central to that conversation is high throughput satellite technology and Intelsat's plans to support our customers' future requirements. In this video, we'll explain the five key attributes that should be considered when choosing any high throughput satellite platform. Just as important are the customer applications, so we'll also share with you how those five attributes apply to various customer business models. In the end, we'll briefly highlight our own high throughput solution, Intelsat Epic, and how customers looking for a high performance, high throughput platform could benefit in the future. Thanks for watching. Let's start with a definition. A high throughput satellite is a satellite that has many times the throughput of a traditional FSS satellite for the same amount of allocated frequency on orbit. As a point of comparison, our Galaxy satellites transmit about 2 gigabits per second total capacity based on the applications that they're serving. Our Intelsat 9 satellites typically transmit about 4 gigs so a little bit more capacity and throughput. Those are the typical FSS models. In our definition, high throughput will be multiples of those numbers per second. Another part of the definition is that all high throughput satellites, regardless of the spectrum used, will firstly take advantage of frequency reuse, secondly leverage spot beams to increase throughput, and third, reduce the cost per bit delivered. Looking at Intelsat 9, transmitting 4 gigabits per second of capacity, you see four zone beams that reuse the spectrum four times, and two hemispheric beams used twice. However, Intelsat 9 has no spot beams, so it is not a high throughput satellite by our definition. When we considered how to design Intelsat EPIC, our high-throughput, high-performance platform, we looked at five technical elements or attributes in order to meet our customers' evolving needs. The first element is throughput, or the total bits transmitted per second. Next is spectral efficiency, which is actually interdependent of the throughput requirements. The third attribute is the coverage. Simply, what is the region that needs to be served with the spacecraft? The fourth is network architecture, which has more variability than the basic star configuration that most HTS designs incorporate. Last but not least is frequency, which takes into consideration both the available bandwidth of the spectrum in C, KU, or KA, and the characteristics of the spectrum. All five components influence the satellite design. Let's start with the first attribute of HTS, which is throughput. In very simple terms, throughput is the rate of error-free information delivered per second through a satellite channel or bandwidth. That's the number of bits, typically in gigabits per second, transmitted by the satellite. Since we're talking about a satellite that delivers higher throughput, how do we increase the number of bits transmitted per second? Throughput is a function of two things, bandwidth of the channel and spectral efficiency of the channel. So one way to increase throughput on a satellite is to increase bandwidth, or how much spectrum we can utilize from a particular orbital location. Think of increasing the size of a pipe that is being used to transmit information to users. In the case of satellites, of course, it's not a physical pipe in space, but a wireless channel. So the size of the pipe is actually the bandwidth available. If there is 500 megahertz of bandwidth authorized to be used for fixed satellite services at a particular longitude, that's the size of the pipe one has to work with. This bandwidth limitation is exactly what high throughput satellites are designed to overcome. And one way to overcome the bandwidth limitation is to reuse the frequency. 500 megahertz of KU or C or KA band 
can be reused in a number of different coverages. And every time it is reused, the overall bandwidth is increased, which increases the total throughput capability on the satellite. However, you can't think of throughput in the absence of spectral efficiency. Now that the pipe has a size that's defined in megahertz, how many megabits per second can be transmitted through each megahertz? Or put another way, how efficiently are we using the pipe? Ideally, one is looking to transmit as close as possible to the theoretical limit. That is the number of bits per second in a given channel size or bandwidth. Now here is an important point. Increasing the frequency reuse does not necessarily keep the efficiency neutral. Actually, what happens often is, as one increases reuse, then one reduces the ability to achieve maximum efficiency. It's sort of like putting the pedal to the floor. You will push more gas in the car's engine, but your RPM will spike and you'll consume fuel much less efficiently. Sometimes you have to accelerate fast. Other times you can accelerate more gently and therefore more efficiently. In other words, the more efficient you are, the more power you'll have left to exploit. If you start with something that's not very efficient from the user standpoint, you're already at the max, and the users will not necessarily be able to leverage fully the bandwidth you're providing. So when considering the first attribute, there is a trade-off between bandwidth and efficiency. Throughput is a critical consideration for mobility customers, and here's why. We know that in enterprise and government markets today, bandwidth-intensive applications are increasingly central to day-to-day -day operations. The frequency with which users wish to access fast, reliable connectivity is growing too. Let's take the example of a passenger ship, perhaps a cruise ship, with thousands of passengers and crew. This ship is like a small town moving from place to place. With no permanent location, the ship of course depends on satellite for connectivity. But today it is consuming more and more bandwidth. Each of the passengers boarding that cruise typically will be carrying multiple devices that they will expect to connect to a mobile network laptop computers, tablets, smartphones, e-readers, and so on. There is the demand too from the ship's operations, demand which continues to grow as the complexity of onboard systems increases coupled with the need for full visibility from the shore. Moreover, the challenge for satellite operators like Intelsat is not only to meet today's demand for such bandwidth from such mobile platforms, but to provide future networks that are future-proofed for tomorrow's bandwidth demands. And it is high throughput satellites and their ability to bring bandwidth at economics hitherto not possible that will allow service providers to leverage the traditional advantages of satellite, like tremendous reach, quick deployment, mission-critical reliability, security and control with the increased opportunity of higher throughput. The second technical attribute of high throughput satellites is spectral efficiency. We talk about efficiency as a driver of throughput, but it's also an attribute of high throughput technology, specifically related to the frequency reuse and spot beams. Spot beams inherently improve efficiency in every frequency band. In fact, reducing the beam size causes two things to happen. First, the power in the spacecraft becomes concentrated in a smaller area. More power available translates to higher efficiency. Typically, however, this additional power is used to increase the transponder size on a high throughput satellite. Second, the noise temperature is reduced when the beam size is reduced, allowing for a more efficient transmission from a remote. The second efficiency is typically significant. However, if spot beams with the same frequency are too close to each other, 
they start to interfere with one another and decrease the overall spectral efficiency. There will be more or less interference depending on the proximity of the beams and the number of beams with the same frequency. So there is a trade-off between frequency reuse and spectral efficiency. All multi-spot high-throughput satellite designers break down the available spectrum into segments. These segments are typically referred to as colors. A four-color reuse scheme, as shown here in red circles, reuses the same frequency segment wherever you see the color red. In this case, each of the four colors is a 250 megahertz slice of the total 500 megahertz spectrum, which would provide an aggregate of 1000 megahertz using both polarizations. In an eight color reuse scheme, the spots are much further apart. So on the right, you have something that's better in terms of interference between spots. Less interference generally translates to higher efficiency. The trade-off is that you have less aggregate throughput on your spacecraft when an eight color scheme is used because you're reusing the same frequency fewer times. The choice of color scheme is dependent on the applications that will be served by the satellite. In a consumer grade service where contended bits are being provided and the satellite resources are being managed by a single vendor, a lower color scheme to allow maximum frequency reuse is an appropriate choice. However, for cases where multiple service providers deliver solutions using different uplink facilities and terminal sizes, a higher color scheme may be more appropriate. In this case, the operator will have fewer users of the satellite overall and likely better throughput, signal availability, and predictability, which is important when a guaranteed or committed rate of transmission matters to the customer. Let's look at this another way. Here we have a chart where on the horizontal axis, we're showing the total aggregate throughput of a satellite in gigabits per second. And on the vertical axis, we're showing the total spectral efficiency in bits per second per hertz. A typical traditional satellite being used for a VSAT network, for example, may be located at this point on the chart, typically lower aggregate throughput with reasonable efficiency. The high throughput satellite designed for consumer applications is at the other extreme of the aggregate throughput with efficiencies that may be in that range or slightly higher than the traditional satellite. A high throughput satellite designed for enterprise applications may opt for higher spectral efficiency and give up on aggregate throughput as shown here. The selection of the throughput versus the spectral efficiency is driven amongst other things we've already discussed by the applications being served. When it comes to the efficiency of HTS, there is a trade-off depending on the applications employed by the customer. A lower efficiency design will be optimized for shared networks. For many users, at the lowest possible cost per user. This arrangement is typical for a consumer application. It is absolutely the right design, the right service level for those kinds of applications, delivering very high throughput with lower efficiency. The alternative is a higher efficiency design that will enable a carrier grade service, something that enterprise and government customers will be attracted to most. This type of mobility customer is usually employing satellite for specific mission critical applications and typically requires committed bandwidth to a single user or group of users. Regardless of the higher or lower efficiency requirements, a high throughput satellite will be more efficient overall than an FSS satellite. The third technical attribute of HTS is coverage. So let's start with the difference between frequencies. The size or coverage of the beam depends on the frequency. Consider a standard spacecraft and take an antenna reflector of two and a half meters which is what can usually fit under the fairing of a rocket. 
In Ka band, this two and a half meter antenna on the spacecraft will shape a beam that is about 200 miles in diameter. In Ku band, it's about 600 miles that we can shape with the same size antenna on the spacecraft. In C band, it's about 1,000 miles. Ka is a frequency that helps concentrate the power more than any other frequency for a given satellite antenna size. So let's assume that there is a very large territory to cover, such as Africa. Here is a hemibeam that Intelsat would have on the standard spacecraft, not high throughput. If 200 mile Ka spot beams are to be used, a significant number of beams will be required that will surpass the available resources even on the largest of satellite platforms. It's more reasonable to either use larger Ka spots or Ku spots. However, since Ka requires more margin for rain fade, for the larger spot sizes, Ku is more practical. The point here is that if you're going to cover Africa, you can't do it with small size spots like 200 mile spots. So we need to make them larger, say 600 mile spots, to get that kind of coverage. If you do that though, you effectively lose the benefit of the Ka band because now you've made it the same size as Ku. Plus, you've the addition margin of rain fade. If you're going to make these spots larger, then you must consider that you give up the benefits of the frequency that, for instance, Ka could have provided you. For the mobility customer, coverage is certainly one of the most critical service attributes. Our job is to match the coverage we deliver through our network to what the customer needs. Many customers, whilst mobile, operate in a specific, localised geographic market. A good example of this is the offshore oil and gas market, where there may be hundreds of platforms, supply vessels and accommodation barges, all engaged in exploiting specific reserves. But in fact, they don't need broad coverage, they just need coverage to blanket the breadth of their current and planned operations. With high throughput satellite, we have the ability to build the capacity and the coverage to match the needs of specific customer sets, in particular geographic markets. On the other hand, we also serve many customers that have a global remit and therefore seek a consistent service irrespective of where in the world they operate. Having recognised that certain mobility segments, merchant shipping, global government and airlines all included, all operate globally, it's important then to drill down to the next level and to understand what that means in terms of concentration of traffic around the globe. For example, take a look here at the traffic patterns for the three main airline alliances. You can see that the geographic span of their routes is extremely large, but also you can see that there are some very specific high density routes, none more so than the North Atlantic. We've already described the benefits that HTS can bring to individual mobile users. But we've also discussed how coverage is typically optimised at the cost of throughput, which means that the decision as to which geographies to focus HTS coverage on is a key one. When we look at concentrations of maritime traffic, we see a similar trend, whereby there are some evident highly trafficked routes such as the Gulf of Mexico and the Mediterranean Sea. Those that justify coverage from an HTS satellite. However, in other regions, such as most of the Pacific, traditional wide beam satellites are likely to provide the best solution for service in that particular region. The fourth attribute of a high throughput satellite is the network architecture. This is a subject that is less often addressed but is fundamental to what we offer our customers. 
Open architectures are open from two standpoints. The first standpoint is they're open to many network topologies, which are the arrangements of the users relative to the gateway. And they're also open from the standpoint of connecting to different kinds of network technologies on the ground. There are three variations of network topologies. You have a certain number of users, and the clusters of spot beams that serve them are user beams. And then you have the connectivity between these users and a gateway, which will, for instance, be connected to the public internet. That's the hub. This is called the star configuration. Every user has to come back to a common point in the network, to the gateway, since there is no connectivity between user beams in the star topology. Most high-throughput systems that will serve consumer broadband are done like this. Now, if the network architecture is open, it's possible for every spot to be connected to every other spot. This is the second kind of network topology, called a mesh topology. The third possible architecture is what we call loopback, where the gateway and the users are in the same region, and the region is covered by a single spot that loops back and forth. If you want to offer that capability, you need payloads that you generally do not find on most high-throughput systems. You need an open architecture for that. The second way that network architecture may be more open or more closed is in terms of what ground technologies it accepts. If your network is such that any user can decide to use any of these terminal technologies in your network, it's an open architecture. If you have to tell your customers that to use a system, they have to use a certain gateway and certain terminals from that system, it's a closed architecture. We also need to consider that we happen to have customers that have their gateways and network technologies in place already. If I have one gateway beam, as in a closed network, this gateway beam works only for customers who happen to have their gateway in this beam. Or they need to use my gateway and I start to manage their service. In an open network architecture, I can bring in my high throughput satellites and customers who have their gateways, wherever they are, continue to use them because my beams can handle gateways and users. There are many considerations from the customer perspective in terms of the architecture of a high throughput system for mobility applications. There's no right or wrong answer. It depends on the customer's business. Closed architecture can be a way to use an HTS system more efficiently. If you want to get as many users as possible on the network, then that's going to be the best way to do it. On the other hand, though, an open architecture is the best option for situations in which customers want to have a choice of the terminal and platform technology that they employ. In the mobility market, this is key, since there is a diverse range of mobile terminal configurations in use, and customers are often heavily invested, both financially and emotionally, in a specific solution. Antennas installed on mobile platforms are typically costly in terms of the hardware as well as the installation. For the government or enterprise owner of a mobility asset, to return to that asset in order to replace the satellite antenna and or modem can be a very expensive and sometimes impossible exercise. Conversely, for a customer to continue to roll out a technology configuration today that can be used with tomorrow's HTS technology is a real benefit to the customer and ensures that investments made to date in both hardware and operation of specific technologies are not wasted. The fifth technical element of a high throughput satellite is the spectrum. Our view is that high throughput satellites can be developed in any frequency band. So how do we select a frequency? Availability and access to spectrum is the first criteria. 
Most high throughput satellite providers use KA band because it's all that is available to them. The second criterion is the atmospheric conditions in the regions that's being served. For instance, during rainy conditions, C-band signals are least impacted. KU is impacted more and KA is impacted the most. In certain regions such as the Middle East or large areas of the US for that matter, that's not a big differentiator. In Southeast Asia, this is certainly a key consideration. For geography that is relatively small and dry, for example, KA is the best way to concentrate power and provide throughput to the users. The third criterion for frequency selection is the availability of an existing infrastructure. If you already have an infrastructure in place with say 1,000 terminals out there, you're not going to want to replace them. Rather, you'll want a solution that uses a spectrum that won't require significant additional capex to implement. There are many business considerations for selection of spectrum. KA band is tremendous for consumer broadband where you want to maximize throughput and take advantage of the power. But there are other frequencies that are well suited to other end user applications such as mobility. Frequency ties to geography, to what you want to do in terms of how much coverage you require. Do you need to cover the world or do you need to cover a specific area? Frequency is also tied to the performance and cost which customers need to evaluate in their business cases. An essential facet of mobility networks, both government and enterprise, is redundancy. Customers need to be sure that the network they choose is able to withstand any setbacks with backup capacity available and on hand. Some frequency bands, such as KU band, have a very mature level of deployment and, as such, customers have multiple options to fall back on in the event of the non-availability of the space segment they have been using. Similarly, it is possible to install hardware on ships, planes and vehicles at certain frequency bands such as KU band, that have a long track record of quality and performance and are available from multiple vendors. Now that we have given you the big picture of high throughput technology, let's take a final look at how Intelsat is putting high throughput satellites to work for our customers. We designed the Intelsat EPIC platform in close collaboration with our customers, a process that evolved over the course of several years. We were only able to do this through understanding their plans for growth and how we could support their unique application requirements into the future. From those discussions came Intelsat EPIC, our high throughput, high performance platform that attracted premier customers, leaders in their industries, as soon as it was unveiled. We designed a multiple band, open architecture system so that we can serve customer applications across a variety of business lines. It is designed with resiliency and security. This is absolutely essential for our customers, and so we're working very hard to make sure that as we develop it, we build in critical elements for their mission-critical applications. And finally, Intelsat EPIC will deliver a lower cost per bit to our customers. When you combine that with the open architecture of this network and its backwards compatibility, we're delivering to our customers a lower total cost of ownership so that the economics and all of the advantages of our high-performance satellite platform will help drive their business into the future. We're excited about what Intelsat EPIC represents, not just for our customers, but for the overall industry. Thank you for taking the time to join us today.